One day. Showbiz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're... Turns out our guest tonight is very polite. Very polite. <laughs> Just wait. Very, very polite so far. It's not a, it's a hot and cold experience. <laughs> All right, let's see if this is working. It is working. It is working. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Cars and Comedy Show. Thank you for clicking on us this evening. My name is Jay Ryan. We've got the Stiglet here tonight. We've got Nicole, and you are not going to believe this. Finally, it's happening. Finally, it's actually happening. Um, let's see. Retired Porsche factory driver, uh, race car variety driver, race car driver of many varieties before that, uh, uh, a co-creator of Luftgekult, you know him. Uh, he's got an exciting new project coming up with Rod Emery and Haggerty that we're going to be talking about tonight. That's right, Mr. Patrick Long. <laughs> he's going to be here in just a couple minutes. Like I said, we have the Stiglet here as well. You can't see him, but he'll be over here in just two seconds to either run cameras or dial up the computer. He's uh, he's not interning. To what are you doing? You're not interning tonight. I think it might be our guest. You know, we've got a, a race car driver in training over here, so I think maybe our our guest tonight perhaps drew everyone out of the woodwork, um, at least the Stiglet. So that's what's going on. We've got our folks on Instagram as well, and up north in Canada. Producer Mike, what is up there, fella? You look good with your new desk and new area. Admiral, good to see you, sir. It's hilarious. I think maybe you're, uh, while the audio works on our side, it seems like you're on the wrong mic on your side. We got the room tone really? mic. Really? You can't hear me? Yeah. We can hear you, but it's like the room tone mic. You can work on that in the meantime. It might, okay, it might, we that. might figure it out, might not. Uh, Will, take it away. Bam, and it, meh, 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 meh. Welcome back, everybody. It's Thursday, uh, August 11th. Uh, it's going to be a good one tonight. Uh, this has been a long time coming, as our guest just said, and a bubble popped on my blue card. Uh, Patrick Long is here. He's sitting right over there. That's not him. That's not him. That's not him. There he is. I'm here. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you can bring your mic there if you want to join in. Otherwise, I'm just going to tell everybody the dates. The top of show we've decided to start doing at the end of the show, which is more palatable for podcast people. So I'll just remind everybody right now that we are sitting here with... Retired Porsche factory driver, co-creator of Luftgekult, and he has some exciting new projects he'll tell you about tonight. Patrick Long, thank you so much for being here, dude. Thanks. For Good to be here. Thanks for your patience. Uh, we we tried this a couple times, but um, <laughs> I finally I finally showed up. 
I uh, I think it was. Uh, I don't think it was all. Was it all you? I don't think it was, I all, think you. It was all me. You're being nice. All right. I thought it wasn't COVID a problem too. I think that was well, an that, issue. Yeah, that was a small bump in the road. <laughs> well, thanks for finally being here. Um, every time I've ever run into you, uh, you just always seem calm and and cool as a cucumber. I'm assuming that has to do with your race car prowess, but then also. You grew up in Southern California, and then I read some of the stuff you sent me that you son of a carpenter, surfer, race car rat, uh, uh, demolition derby guy. I feel like maybe this chill thing is also just in your blood. How uh, did you get to be this way? And then we'll start with your accomplishments. Yeah, I think um, I'm a little bit of a, a dual personality, some would say, who know me well. Um, mm-hmm. There's intense, uh, goal-oriented, competitive pat, and then there's my old man and my family and um, my roots. And I think that um, moving overseas as a 16 year old, I sort of had a dual exposure growing up, but um, as long as there's no helmet or trophy uh, around, I'm, I'm usually, or, or parking at Luft, I'm usually pretty relaxed. <laughs> Wait a second, that, yeah, I do, that was maybe the one time, but that wasn't your issue. Uh, so it is in the blood, kind of. It's just sort of part of the DNA. Well, I mean, I told you that because it's a good thought starter. Most of the kids I grew up with, you know, they, they had man- mega mansions and big race teams. And we were the family with a jet ski trailer and plywood on top of it, uh, behind a, a Ford Ranger pickup truck. So, um, we come from humble roots, but when I landed the dream drive with Porsche in 2002, um, I got to see the other side uh, of the, the paddock, if you will, mm. and just have loved all the opportunity the brand's given me both, um, on the racetrack, but also in life in general. But you loved it always or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was crazy racing oriented. Anything that I could race, anything that I could drive. I'm sure a lot of your <laughs> guests have talked about that. Um, whether it was a big wheel or a slot car or a go kart or a dirt bike, um, not, I just not all the go. guests, but the ones you hang out with, from Zwart to Freeman Thomas, all those guys. Yeah, they all sort of had that same thing. But why? What the heck is it? Like, what? Where does that come from? I think it's independence. It's creativity. It's competition. Um, mm being socially awkward and not good at anything else. I don't know. Um, I so get that. That's I, the one I get. Yeah. they. Um, I love the escape um, of, of being so target fixated and having to have so much perfection that you escape all of your inner dialogues. You have to um, in order to compete. But when it really comes down to it, um, and I think about where I am now, almost a year out of the race seat uh, full time, um, it's wow. been a lot of reflecting. Yeah. Well, shit, that's a, that's its own thing. How, how has this year been then, the first year not in the seat? You're watching it happen. Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, <laughs> it has. I, um, I not, not my problem, that kind of thing? I guess um, some of it is just not traveling um, and, and taking a break, so that might wear off. Mm. But that shine is still uh, bright. Um, not being on an airplane every fourth day. Uh, I know it sounds like oh. a boohoo moment, but um, yeah, I went I went pretty hard for two decades on the on the travel side. So I'm I'm loving being at home and seeing my kids grow up, but also being able to give a lot of attention to some of these projects that I've been fortunate to be in, a part of, but always sort of one foot in, one foot out because I'm trying to be a competitive athlete in one side of my brain, and the other side I'm trying to be a team player. I'm trying to be a brand builder. I'm trying to be an innovator, and uh, so it's it's always been compromised. That's a lot of hats, and you're a businessman, too. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Did Were you always able to kind of juggle and spin the plates that way, or is that something that came over time from amassing your career? I think the um, start many projects and finish few, that's probably in my nature. Um, oh, you know, interesting. The, 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 that's weird. The go-for-it attitude of, like, why not? Let's do it. Um, that's, that's probably um, nature, but now I'm trying to nurture myself into <laughs> – um, understanding <laughs> limitations and boundaries, but um, no, it's it's. I I don't I'm know. I would say I'm good. myself is a great yes. freaking quote, by the way. Yes. Well, I'm trying to nurture myself. <laughs> I'm trying to nurture the spirit, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's all good problems. Uh, your tan is ridiculous. Uh, are you surfing? Do you surf? Are you surfing every day? Are you at the beach every day? I would never. What's going on? I would never <laughs> refer to myself as a surfer, but I just came back from six weeks up in Muskoka, uh, north of Toronto, and. T- Canada and oh. it was a lot of outdoor time um, in a very different setting but it's an escape that uh, my family and I take uh, my wife is from Toronto and so we um, spent the time up there for July and a little bit on each end wow so well so fishing per- perhaps that's the the well-rested uh, whatever I see on you 
Yeah, I, that's probably luft ticketing. It's probably not well rested. It's probably like long nights, but uh, we're, we're Is here. Is that it? Am I reading it wrong? Maybe you're just exhausted and worn out. <laughs> Sometimes that looks like, oh, I just got off vacation. A little bit of both. Uh, I mean, we're bouncing around pretty quick, but Luft is the big thing on everybody's mind. Huge week. Luft 8. How's it going? It's going well. Um, I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around all of it. I love every <laughs> minute of it, but I also um, i am always tested and, and learning, and it still feels fresh. There's still that um, kind of ripe let's do this every single time we go at it and the response this week as something we haven't seen before in almost 10 years um and yeah just just it just gets better so what do you think as i spill my shit all over here what do you think the reason is for that do you think it's the fact that they know the place and it was a popular it was a crowd favorite uh, do you think it's just that, oh, we skipped a little bit of time because of whatever? Do you think you're just, the whole thing is that damn good and it's in people's veins now and they gotta have it, gotta have it? I, maybe everything? I don't know. Um, uh, I asked a few of my friends who have kind of been quiet consultants, you know, what is what is it? And people all have a different opinion and uh, I love that because it's, you don't know. You mean the show itself? What just, is not nah, just home? just the response this week, um, the, oh. the, the 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 timing, the positivity, the excitement. Um, we, it's been a few years since we've been in LA, so that's probably a big reason. Could uh, be. There's so many car events. Like I don't get to a fraction of them anymore. We're so lucky where we live, and there is so much more community than that. Was really the reason I started Lyft because I wasn't finding any community to go drive my vintage 911. And these days, I can't keep up with how many events there are every weekend. So I, I thought that might be something that could slow the passion, but it's quite the opposite. So I, maybe it's just that the whole scene is growing. Uh, that's interesting. We all kind of thought the same thing. It's so saturated. But when you look back, that was the one that everyone is all kind of, I don't want to say emulating or working towards, but there was definitely a bar set. And I feel like uh, anything I've ever been to since is emulating some version, some part of it, some aspect of it. And I don't know, with the a real one coming back, maybe it's like, you know, there's a lot of celebrity impersonators around. But you know what? Uh, Wayne Newton's actually coming, folks. And uh, we can see the real guy. No, that's a terrible analogy. I was like, <laughs> I never. That's the been, worst I, thing I, in the world. We've All never, right. We've never Sinatra. Aspired. Sinatra's better. <laughs> Sinatra. Gosh, that was awful. No, Sinatra. I got you. I got you. Just Wayne Newton came to mind. <laughs> I'm Vegas. <laughs> um, That's awful. Yeah, I I think so we try to keep it fresh. This is why you come by. <laughs> <laughs> we try to keep it fresh. We try to um, work at every detail, and we feel as though there's so much that we can still um, do better. And I think the theme this year is let's not rest on any um, expectation or. Um, knowledge of what we do and oh, with whoa. that with that it's it's about stories it's about um fresh persona fresh people um new cars that you don't see every single weekend that you don't see at every single lift um the hard part in in car selection is is that the majority of the cars that um are submitted won't be on the grounds because we just don't have enough real estate with all the porsche passion but that's mm. a good problem to have it is i think it's um everybody wants to bring their dog to the dog park that was my <laughs> that was my analogy from from year one and um you know we'll, yeah, we'll but, see. yeah but year one it was like there was like 10 parking spaces i mean uh well, do, can we get are you allowed to get specific about where this is going to be we, we yeah. know we know port of los angeles yeah correct? no we're, we're going this, back to the same venue from 2017 it was crafted Crafted is part of it. Yeah, it's two. It's it's the Port of LA has two main buildings with inside of this footprint, and there's a great brewery on site called Brewery West. Um, ah, they they go off. Um, okay. Crafted is also part of the facility, but but yeah, it is that same geographical location. Yeah, rained in the morning, but it came That's out right. night with the rainbows and everything. The main yeah, the main the main like essence or hub of the show was. Um, the interior spaces of those old rustic massive buildings, I want to say 50,000 square feet, we have to, uh, we get to curate and um, build out into little storylines, little themes, um, discoveries. I think that that's always been one of our themes. And Jeff's on Jeff's on tonight. Uh, yes. He might still be here, but he, he's all, he always tells me like, 
you, you know, you got to keep a little bit for us. Don't give it all away. So, um, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting work. Good to he's know. A good, he's a good, good to coach. know. He's a good coach. <laughs> Don't give it all away. Yeah. But um, we're excited, needless to say. Uh, you know, we always think of uh, Zwart because of his connection with the project. But, um, you know, we see Howie Idelson all the time over at that, that thing in Brentwood. And um, he doesn't seem to get as much street cred on this project as well. But you guys actually started that together, didn't you? We did, yeah. Um, Howie is a lifelong friend. I met Howie, whew, I'm going to age myself right here, early 90s racing go-karts. Um, oh. So uh, he was somebody that I looked up to and always had a sense of creativity and was like a real pioneer within the scene of karting. Um, he did lots of projects for companies like Nike and Oakley and really innovated um one one piece graphics in karting now you see every karting manufacturer has a side pod and it has like a almost a motocross style graphic i remember when um, bob harrow uh started um gearbox and how he was in, involved with bob and so i think creativity always centralized around howie and in the same way as Jeff in cinematography and automotive um, in directing. And so um, these creatives have always been people that I've gone to in, in seeking, um, you know, the advice, the ideas, the, the sense of, of intuition to just look at a space and, and see what it could be. Mm. And then um, we riff on it and try to uh, turn, turn that in. But to get specific, I, I was with Howie at Deus in 2000. 13 and I had driven my 3-2 Carrera uh, to the meeting. We were designing a shoe together. I was consulting him on the, the technicalities of it. He was more on the design side. And I told him, I'm like, it's burning me up that um, I have this car and I want to go meet people and I want to go drive and I want to go talk. And there's not much offer. There's an hour south to the Cars and Coffee in Irvine, but it's the same six Porsches every weekend. <laughs> Um, there was there was a show in the and valley. And the M4 guy that jumps the curb. Sure. That's right. That's right. And then there's the show in the valley um, at the Westfield Mall. And I went there one morning and right. I was like, this isn't what I'm looking for either. I was like, there's something here. And I, I Nobody had... Nobody seemed to be focusing on the car culture, which seems to be something that you guys, whether it was intentional or not, seem to have gotten. Yeah, there, there was that. And there was just cars in a parking lot at 6 a.m. on a weekend. Um, I couldn't convince my non-automotive friends to come check that out. Mm. And if I did, they looked at me like, where's breakfast? Because this, is, yeah, that's this true. isn't going anywhere. That's familiar. Okay. So I said, well, yeah. why does it have to be at 6 a.m. in an empty parking lot? And why does it have to be car after car after car after car? Why can't we um, rethink this a little? <laughs> Look, Colt was born. Wow. We, we, th we said, not I. <laughs> but just over coffee one day, sitting there at Deus. Yeah. That's and then, hilarious. And then I think I told Julian, who was the GM of Deus at that point, how he knew Julian. And uh, Jeff Swart had known Carby, who was one of the founders of Deus, because they were close by in Sydney. And anyways, it was this small circle of car people that kind of were one step connected through Deus. And I remember telling the GM, uh, Julian, I want to I wanna throw a car show here like in this parking lot. And he was like, well, how many cars is your car show going to have? Like six cars. And I think that day we ended up stuffing 40 uh, air-cooled Porsches into that parking lot. And they, <laughs> they sort of bl bled into out the onto the sidewalk a little sidewalk, bit and yeah. the, the median. And, and then I think Lincoln was like a mile of Porsches it, all the way it, down. It was. We lived across the street at the oh, time. Cool. I mean, we remember when that place was a Conroy's Flowers. Yes, you know exactly. I, mean? I remember that. For years yeah. and years. And then it was empty for years and years. Uh, and we lived across the street, and I had that stupid M4 at the time. And <laughs> weird, weird, weird oh, timing. Oh, you're the M4 <laughs> Yeah, <driver>. that's weird. <laughs> weird. <laughs> and uh, and sure enough, we were coming home one day, whatever that uh, Saturday or Sunday was, and we were like, what the frig is this? And we totally wanted to check it out, but there was no – it wasn't possible for us to just pop into that thing. Uh, it would have been a production. And then found out from a friend of ours and neighbor who had a Porsche, he was like, oh, yeah, no, they, they had a whole thing over there. And then it was the next year at, was it Bandito Brothers? Correct, yeah. That was when uh, uh, it sort of became a thing that was I was aware of ahead of time. And uh, um, that was when it was on my radar. And I feel like a lot of other people in L.A., I don't know why at the time. Um, is that when it sort of started to? Or was it... Uh, was it the fat, the fat, Modernica, Modernica, sorry. Um, I don't know. I, I think 
everybody has kind of a different story um, of of when it really meant something to them or or uh, when the the scope shifted. But to me, I'm I'm living in a vacuum, so it's <laughs> all it's all one and the same. Like I think about the I know where I was in the days after the first event um, in 2014, and looking at the imagery and seeing the comments, and even though Instagram was kind of just starting to go at that point, it was still so great to be connected um, post show, and I still have that same emotion after a show. Um, I think for. Modernica was was definitely a scale that I underestimated. I remember talking to Jeff and saying, maybe we should let other marks in because how are you we going to fill this about place? It? Yeah, how are we going to fill Moderna? Because it's it felt so vast. And it of course, did, but do you yeah. remember the an, the annex lots after that? They were yeah. all full. Well, I remember the cops showing up and looking at me and said, "You've got a problem." Like three blocks down the main drag in vernon is shut down with people trying to get in here so sort this out or we're gonna shut this whole deal down so i remember those types of oh. moments where i mean we were probably a staff of three for that show like it was very much um i remember that, you that were, block party that got out of control you were personally greeting the cars i remember that as they came through the gate i just i i don't know that i i didn't know about the cops and all of that yeah that's an interesting backstory. Yeah, uh, Howie was out on the on the top of the street, and he came back. And I remember he looked at me and he says, "You know a lot of people. You, you <laughs> a lot of or something like you're, a lot of people know your name because the amount of times I said no and they said Pat said he just looked at me like why did you put me out there? And then Jeff actually Jeff was on the behind me trying to land cars as we were sending them through the gate but yeah i mean i'm 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 giving you the behind the curtain it was a, it was a hot mess but we we got he's it. trying to make his rainbows and all his beautiful mosaics and all the nice patterns no at that point we were just get land, in we were just landing cars i mean we had 356 we had about 356 row we definitely wanted to set cars in spaces um, a unique way. We had our photo booth. We had a lot of things that have carried through. Um, and as you said, inspired many shows to replicate. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, those are, those are kind of the, the fixed points. The, the foundations are still kind of how we, we do our thing. Yeah. That with the, the car, I guess it was a 350. I'm having a hard time. They all blend together now, but, uh, uh at that Modernica one, that was, it was the warehouse where all the the supplies were and everything, and there were just a few cars down the center, and that's something that you guys have carried over a few different places, and it's just so sexy. <laughs> yeah, probably, bravo, you guys, thanks. bravo. That was probably that white gamund. Oh, yeah, it know. was, in fact. I'm sure owned, you're right of it. I forget who owns that thing. No, I'm just kidding. It's, was it? It was, was it Zwarts? Jay-Z's, yeah. Oh, okay. The real but, Jay-Z. But it didn't have the, uh, it didn't have its little mohawk then on there at the time. No. That was later. Um, Gosh. You know, we love Jeff Swartz so much. I don't, uh, how did you guys, was it through racing? How did you guys get together? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the summary of most of my Porsche relationships on the air-cooled Luft side was always a gateway of racing, whether that was Howie or Jeff or Jeff Gamroth. Or, I met all these people at the racetrack, and it just so happened that they had air-cooled cars or shops or restoration um tuning, you name it, engine building. Um, Jeff and I met, to answer your question, Jeff no, and I it's met okay. in 2003, I'm, I'm... 2003 at Petit Le Mans. We were driving in the same team. It was my first endurance sports car race um, at the uh, finale of ALMS in the time, at the time, and Jeff was driving in the sister car uh, of the same team, and um, I forget, I think we were, we were up checking out a, a corner between sessions, and we both happened to be at turn 10 um, up at at um, Road Atlanta, and he just was a nice guy. Just started chatting. That was basically it. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna break the fourth wall here and ask you: Can you please just put that on a wide of the three of us so I have that camera? Because right now I don't have it, and it's stressing me out because I keep not being able to just cut to it. No, no, just down where it usually is. Yeah, just yeah. You've seen the show. You know what we're doing, Stiglitz. And then I, I want to talk about some of your cars and stuff, and I want Stiglitz to be able to pull them up on the uh, the computer over there. Stiglitz. Um, Genius, by the way. Stiglet, you hear that? The, the, Thank you very much. You should trademark that. <laughs> should. His, You're mom, not so, his mom may have. He's not so Get lit the, anymore. The, the, he's about 6'5". Yeah, you know. We said the same thing. Collins upgraded the Stig. Yeah, exactly. It might be time. Um, you yourself, I mean, every time we see you out on the road driving, it seems to be in a different car. 
Um, so you've got your own collection of things. Can we talk about some of the, the, the your personal collection that you drive around? Sure. Um, yeah, it's back to that um, many projects, none complete kind of thing. But uh, <laughs> well, I I like the idea of creating but celebrating originality. So. Um, set a different way a sleeper i like cars that that really are period correct but have tweaks and personalizations um in how they drive and mm. how um they feel how they sound what they do um and so without <laughs> going too philosophical um yeah i like cars that are agile um that handle really well i'm ocd to um the umpteenth degree as far as steering wheel straight no vibrations perfect cadence of engine gear ratios differentials you name it and and that just comes from um my job for so long was to tell the engineers and the mechanics what's not ideal about this car i mean really the best drivers can give you feedback to make the car go faster to make the car inspire more confidence to the driver and so right. my personal cars and the um brave mechanics and other people who help tweak on my cars they um, understand that i just am always fixated on trying to just tweak on these cars and i don't claim to make many of these changes myself i i'm fortunate to have a good network of people that'll help me <laughs> i i have personally been at a, a, our lovely friends at TLG shop, and I, I've seen you drive cars and come back and say, "All right, well, I mean, I have the notes. How how deep do you want me to go in these notes? Because I can tell you everything, <laughs> or I can just, you know, kind of bare bones it. Um, you feel everything because you had to, right? I mean, you had to. Yeah, and some of that I had to learn. Um, not not only how to feel. I mean, that sounds a little bit contradictive, but um, yeah, and, <laughs> Most and, people go to therapy, but I see your point. <laughs> and, yeah, and then how to, to relate that to prioritization and uh, what it actually is yeah. that is making you. Some people say, well, oh, it's too stiff, you know, but my engineer would say, is it too stiff in high speed, low speed, lateral, right. uh, vertical? Uh, is it heave? Is it a lack of control? So you start to look into that, like, all right, there, there needs to be a lot more feedback than just it's loose or it's pushing <laughs> or it's stiff or it's soft. Um, but within that, I think it's also understanding what can make the biggest difference. Uh, what's the most bang for the buck um, for the changes and what you focus on because um, every driver likes something a little different. So right. it's also um, understanding that, that average line of driving style because if you drive a car super aggressive um, and you're on the racetrack, of course you're gonna want something different than a car that is a daily driver and, and going down the freeway in LA. And I would say that my personal cars and cars that I, I help shops or, or clients with is really the best of all. I want, mm -hmm. I want a car that can do the, the, the most variety. I don't want a GT3, I don't want a base Carrera, right. I want that, that sweet spot. The, the, the one car to do it all type yeah. of deal. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Is that what you aim for with your car? It is. I mean, that's why we – it was our fourth car when we bought it, and it's our only car now. Awesome. Well, that's, <laughs> we, we, you're, you're living my dream. The uh, the other ones just uh, – that M4, you know, that went away, and then she doesn't drive anymore, and we had another fun car, and that one – it just – we drove the 911 all the time. We're even getting press cars now, and while we love it, and it's most it's, – it's like a wonderful experience, uh, grateful for it, <laughs> we love getting back in the yellow car cool. after. So it's kind of weird, but again, thanks to all of those <laughs> – a million little tweaks. Sure. We didn't stay as period correct as you probably would have. We went period incorrect because I celebrate everything that you drive, Those the old air-cooled uh, air lifestyle, that whole SoCal car culture, 60s, mm -hmm. hot rod, Porsche scene. Like, I just dig that whole thing. So we kind of tried to do that in um, a slightly more modern, reliable nice. package. Nice. So an <laughs> under an under the skin backdate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is actually. It is actually, I cool. guess. And then it, uh, I mean, we, if, yeah, I don't want to talk about our car. I prefer, I'd rather I prefer talk that, about your cars. I prefer that to the uh, above above ground back date. I'm not a big bodywork back date fan, but. And none of our, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't change any of the bodywork. Like to me, it's Herbie the Love Bug. 
And that was still a Beetle on the outside. They just put the race wheels and the, yeah. the brakes and all the other stuff yeah. on it. So to me, it's kind of like, well, it doesn't need to have the GT3 front and back and center exhaust and everything. It's it's just an S body that's really happy, and sometimes it wants to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and we like that. That's right. Um, we didn't get to the list of what the cars might be. Oh, um, Only because I'm thinking Stiglitz might be able to pull up a couple pictures. My, th- um, my Aubergine is maybe a 72 T. Uh-huh. Uh, it is original matching drivetrain. Um, it's is, got an RS. Is that a Porsche name of a color? Yes. I'm so sorry to yes. I'm glad. I'm glad you're in the shot that, and you can ask that. Question. That's a a, um, a a shade of purple. I uh, I know 70s. what it is, and yeah. we know some of that has like color car, but like. I I didn't know if it was a legit Porsche yeah. color or if oh, that or guy. Oh, or a nickname that no, we I was all there. called. Yeah, it. I yeah. think that was there. That their guy was really name. proud of that color, and he said it a lot. <laughs> You've seen his before too, and you look at it and always thinking back. I'm wondering that first who you one, met because there's not a ton of them around. I don't want to say. At least in SoCal. Okay. She wasn't the biggest fan. Got it. But she likes yours a lot. Okay. She's seen it at places. Cool. <laughs> she likes you a lot. I love, yes, and <laughs> I love your car. There's, you know better than probably anyone, maybe Jeff, but personalities go with cars, and I am drawn to personalities more than cars. So, take it or leave it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, amen. I think that's part of what, that's part of what's cool about all this, or at least this little, LA click of Porsche people. It sort of has the, oh, sorry, can you spin that monitor around for Patrick? God, I am the worst today. This is why I was all stressed out. I was like, I didn't do any of the We're things. dialing it in. Whenever. I'm about show business. I feel terrible. You guys are great. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Whenever there's somebody big here, I lose my shit. I'm like, why are they here in our little house? This is so crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's sad, but true. <laughs> um, all right, so the Aubergine car. Can we look up the uh, Aubergine 911? You got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I... Um, oh, and sorry, could you click the switcher thing on? <laughs> uh, open up the app on the desktop there. Oh. Johannes van Overbeek... Um, is we'll a, have a, this all figured out for your second appearance. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> we'll shoot this thing. <laughs> yeah, so Yo- I'll pencil in two years from now. Exactly. Yeah. Good uh, to see you. No, anyway. Johannes van Overbeek is um, a, a dear friend and one of the founders of Flying Lizard. And early on, um, I was asking him a lot of questions. His dad uh, and him... They've been into the vintage Porsche scene for decades, and um, his car was like a halo car, a car that I always um, sort of looked at and thought, man, if I can get deep enough into this and I could play my cards right, I would end up with a car similar to Johannes's. And one day we were actually racing, I think, at the Nürburgring or somewhere we were on the WEC um, international racing scene, and he said, hey, I'm uh, going to let my car go. You know, were, were words I never thought I would hear from him. And I looked at him and I was like, I'm, what are you, what are you talking about? And so long story short, I just said like, it's done. Like I'll, I didn't ask how much I just said, I'll take it and I'll figure it out afterwards. So yeah, that's, um, it's pretty. Yeah. So <laughs> it has an RS flare. Um, it has a complete, uh, revamped everything underneath, but mm-hmm. the, the flare is a, is an OE sort of, Porsche issued flare. It actually it's been looked after. Sorry, it's been looked after by Craig Watkins um, of Smart Racing Products, who's a guru in the suspension world, and he's kind of kept an eye on that car since the '80s, and he's known all the owners and oh, all of its different iterations. So it's a car that has a lot of uh, California lineage, and um, it runs a two seven on the original MFI. It's not a big bore um, or or modern injected engine, but it's tweaked and tuned just right. And uh, I couldn't put more power through an eight inch rear tire than, than what I have. And it, it goes pretty well on the tight twisty stuff. It looks good. Thank you. Real good. So are yeah. those, is that, are those factory size wheels? Those are, I guess well, they would be upgrades in the two seven RS world. Okay. Um, when Johannes kind of originally worked with Jerry Woods and some of the guys up North, the idea was um, there's a story in excellence uh, about four prototype, career rs's that in 72 were running around visoc and they didn't have any script they didn't have any colored wheels they were like the 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 test mule cars and so a lot of the the foundations of this car were were based off of the four career oh, two seven rs cars which that's cool is kind of timely because we're coming up on a big celebration of that car and and that will be one of our our threads at luft the 28 rsr is um 
what's on our poster, our event poster, but the 2.7, we're going to hopefully have some uh, 2.7 RSs that no one's ever seen before. So this is kind of a, a theme around the 2.7 RS. Very but, cool. Yeah. Is yeah. that because of the anniversary? I mean, it's 50 years, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, it's a 50-year awesome. anniversary. Um, and deal. there's some there's some other it's cool... It's a big deal. That's... There's some cool RS things about to break. You've seen probably seen some previews of, of people posting some, some cars and camouflage that are about to... Uh, break the the light of day i'm probably saying too much but i am inc incredibly excited to be a car guy in la these days with everything that's happening uh, uh myers manx the, the you know that the reintroduction there's just so many cool things let alone the car shows like there's the actual projects that are happening the radford that... project i'm still excited about i think that's really cool um a, a lot of our friends are doing really cool shit yeah that manx car um i was there on monday night and uh i mean i, I, mean, I love it yeah, i mean i, I love job. it really cool <sighs> I want to know how much it is. That's that was the question I everybody know. was asking. It's like, all right, I want one. Because we want them all now. I want one, but how much? And so there were people saying seventy-five grand. There were people saying two hundred and fifty thousand. No, They're like we'll oh, see. Oh gosh, I hope not. Uh, I mean, but maybe. Who knows? <laughs> I, I totally want one. And they have the two uh, different. Uh, I guess it's not engines, but uh, power, whatever. One can go uh, more range, and one. Uh, they're electric. Do you know that? No. The new one's electric. That's pretty cool. It is going to be pretty damn cool. Um, what color would you get if you had one, if you were going to get one? Because I, I had a hard time. I, I thought I had an idea in my head, and then when I saw the one that they launched with, I go, oh, I might just do that. And there's a car that, that, that Philip that Philip has, uh, Seraphin has, that it's an original um, that I love that's a dark blue. It's almost like an Oslo or a, a non-metallic aquamarine. Um, I think like a cool, like semi gloss blue um something mm. a little more uh low-key or or a green Those something are, more low-key yeah That's i mean awesome. not, not like a, not buggy. like a full high polished um concourse paint job something that you wouldn't mind running running through the desert yeah that's where i went with like something speckle i, I was thinking like there going go. old school yeah. something with a heavy heavy speckle that way bass you boat. could take it to the beach and it'll just sort of wear well as it there you, you know, go who knows did you bass boat there perfect you yeah flake we were there was a time when we were really into that with carding helmets and it was like how much flake could you get in the color <laughs> which of course you're was blinding making other your, drivers well that and it was making your helmet like two pounds extra with the amount of flake that was in the paint but um, it was real metal it's very sparkly and then there was colored chrome lots of lots of interesting paint um styles in the years it's still that way is it like flake? last weekend there were some kids that their helmets that were like just complete sparkles it was like how bright could it be yeah it's like, yeah he so. you're carding every weekend right yeah i mean i have a matte helmet so i'm the opposite nice. of that but i still have, like every color on it so do you have any questions for pat i, mean, I want to get back to the car collection too but do you have any any uh, you know you're you're making a go of this and you're starting a, a, a an organization to do it and all so do you yeah, have I any guess, advice like, it's not actually a racing question but like questions? you know you talked about the new rs coming out but like how involved are you now that you're retired on the porsche road car side uh, compared to previously um, I have a lot more time for it. It's been um, interesting. I, I started in like 2006 with PCNA on the PR side, uh, new press launches, um, debuting cars, taking them to racetracks or test facilities and letting um, the media all come together. It doesn't really happen that way anymore. Now it's a little bit more the cars go to the members of the media. But <laughs> yeah, it's um, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's sort of... Um, it's definitely different, but I think you guys probably prefer that, although... Well, I'm new to all of this, but it is pretty nuts because I used to hear about people getting sent to different parts of the world. For, oh, they're going to do this thing in, in wherever, Bali or wherever the heck. And now it is just like, well, what week do you want it? And we'll drop it off at your house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's concierge. It's it's the Uber Eats of uh, new <laughs> new uh, new media cars. Um, but no, to get back to your question, um, just got back from a week in Germany uh, shooting um, the debut film for uh, a new car that's about to launch. And yeah, that's the whole thing. Media works in a much different way, um, whether that's temporary or forever, as far as um, cars being unveiled, etc. But love working as an ambassador for Porsche, um, especially the North American um, folks or people that I've worked with for a long time. I'm actually going to head from here to dinner with uh, one of the, the team from PR. They're in town for a, a pretty cool uh, reveal tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye for, for that one. But um, yeah, I, I love that. I love the, the you know, sort of innovation and, and getting to jump into these cars before they, they break cover. But also um, 
showing what they can do. Uh, it never mm -hmm. hurts to be out with the media. Uh, we do a lot of lead follow on track if we have a new performance car. Um, some of the time it's about staying in front of the members of the media and either showing them the line or making sure that they're not absolutely uh, a danger to themselves in, in how late they might be breaking. But um, I would no, guess you probably get a little bit of everything on that one, right? It's Some not, people know what, how to handle physics. and Yeah, you'd, you'd be surprised. There's a lot of um, people in the media that have tons of laps, probably more laps than I've had um, as, as a professional for a couple decades of racing. Um, so the, there's a lot of good drivers, and, and I think Porsche is pretty selective with who they bring out to the racetrack. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of joyriding or um, lap times being set. But um, I can remember uh, you know, when it used to be riding right seat, with some of the members of the media. And we always said that um, if they came down in the morning and they had race shoes and jeans on and they had a helmet bag, you didn't want that guy because you had to ride next to him. And there was no kill switch. There was no brake pedal. And, yeah, uh, he's, I've had he's some scary cowboy, rides. Right? Yeah, I've had some scary rides with uh, some some of the media. <laughs> Excuse me, Jay. And you'll, get, you'll have your list here. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, we've got a whole pile of people in this episode. It's almost like uh, Patrick Lawn is a draw or something. Uh, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Weird. Lots of folks buying badges, uh, lots of activity here. Topless Targa is asking uh, if he's involved in with any GP or with the GP ice race. And then one vintage O2, is Patrick racing something in Monterey next weekend? Uh, great questions. GP ice race, uh, pretty amazing show um, and an event, uh, a race in Austria, in Zell, sort of the home of Porsche um, in Austria. The um, 2019 pre-pandemic it was right at the cusp we were talking about this the other night we were we were traveling to austria and there were some masks some handshakes not it was that real time of of transition but um i haven't been since then i look forward to getting back um out there with ferdy um and his team and sliding on the ice i competed and i had never um been in any competitive atmosphere i, I only saw snow once in my whole life at my house in Southern oh, california so God we uh damn we it, went race, we went and raced on the ice and uh did okay i just pretended like it was dirt so yeah oh. did you, you didn't grow up in socal then no i grew up in all that shit and it's oh, the only yeah. i grew up driving shit cars and shit weather well, that, and that's and, why you're here and learning how to you know do it uh, at really uh things you shouldn't be teaching kids um, and, and yeah, and then you come out here and then you get, uh, real roads and real cars and, and, and it never rains. Uh, it's kind yeah. of amazing, but I learned the car physics through all of that stuff. You learned it on the track? Yeah. Um, Go I, it was dirt for us. It was sand. Oh, it was dirt. Then that's um, the same it, you know, I, I wouldn't, I mean, it's similar uh, ice and snow. I do think that car control starts very young. And I think that my Scandinavian teammates over the years have been <laughs> very good at driving the car uh, free and, and pushing the edge of um, grip. But uh, yeah, m messing around on the dirt, um, sliding around in the dunes of Pismo. Um, those are those are the closest things that we had to ice and snow. Um, but I do think that car control is uh, such a key part of going fast. It's not just about breaking late and going to throttle early, but <sighs> basically, can you catch a car? Do you know uh, what's going to happen before it happens? Um, and I think those are the, the things that off-road and, and low grip teach you. Can you see the future a little bit when you're driving? Are you psychic? Uh, feel? You feel you can feel something happening while it's happening, I think, quicker than most just through previous exposure. Um, visually, I learned a lot uh, during the pandemic about racing, sim racing. Um, I don't consider myself a sim racer or an e-sports person. Ooh, but we've got you, a lot of viewers who love the sim racing. Yeah, that taught me a huge amount about seeing the future and understanding that you have fewer senses to rely on in sim racing. So it's much more visual based. So you honed in your skill because some of that other stuff wasn't there. Yeah, Ooh, absolutely. That's interesting. Mentally, uh, mentally was... Uh, a big part of it is you had to be so precise because the physics of the simulated physics are more sensitive, in my opinion, than the real mm -hmm. um, s physics. And then you had fewer senses um, to rely on. Right. So things crashes happen easier. Um, the the sensitivity of the sim is higher. And so when I went back into the race car, I remember that that session. The first couple corners of the first lap felt a little bit odd, but once everything kind of woke up after a six, eight month hiatus of never driving a car um, on the track. Of course, the 
the mental was strong. Like mm. I came, I came out of the car at the end of that first day in the heat of Sebring, which you don't want to be in Sebring, Florida in the middle of the summer. And I drove the car the whole day <laughs> and I came out and I said, I could, I could go do a full second day right now. I said to my engineer, and that was because physically we had so much off time, uh, when everything was shut down and we weren't racing or traveling that we were training a lot more. And then oh. a lot of sim racing mentally, we were just super super sharp interesting yeah. so yeah. because you kept yourself sharp because in my mind you would uh, uh perhaps have yeah atrophied yeah from not yeah amazing what you do with time yeah gee whiz and the fact that uh, that our little video games can actually help you yeah well, I, that was uh, after that day i was a, a bigger believer i was actually reluctantly competing in sim racing during the shutdown to right fulfill sponsor obligations and etc um, there were real points on the line right yeah i was talking to jensen button at one yeah. point they were doing virtual races that were for real points yeah yeah points money sponsors <laughs> yeah um, i mean we were on a, a fox show on wednesday nights that was live it was a race of champions and we had all types of drivers from all over uh different disciplines and that it was a live because you're all you're all equal in that environment, yeah. right? Yeah, and it was a different discipline of racing every weekend. So we had off-road, we had drag racers, we had, um, you know, indie car guys. It was wild. Look, what was it called? I gotta look this up. This sounds like a blast. I would love I, a show like yeah, this. Yeah, it feels like forever now. But um, I guess they called it like the I Racing Race of Champions. Um, and oh, it was on I Ra I I Racing yeah, I and it was okay. on Fox Sports. Um, and it was super cool. I mean, the bump drafting. You're out there with Kevin Harvick and, um, you know, the, these the real heroes of NASCAR and you're it's a NASCAR week. And here I am, a sports car guy, and it's like the final final lap, you know, but Scott Speed from, uh, you know, Rallycross was out there. Uh, Ron Caps, a friend of mine, uh, drag racer, big drag racer. So there was drivers of all different disciplines. I think we had Pastrana show up one weekend and uh, I think he went upside down. It was pretty standard for Travis. But, <laughs> but into the sim, I, almost how do you not? Do you have your own uh, rig? Or yes. did you go someplace to raise? Um, a little both. bit of both. Okay. Yeah. Um, everybody was scrambling at the beginning uh, for, for hardware and software and things were... Just, I was on the wait was... list for that wheel and then I got it and didn't like it. But every, I know everything was hard to find during uh, COVID. Yeah. So CXC is based in LA and they make motion sims. So I was using their sim rig uh, for the big races. And of course, they had, like yourselves, the, the tech and the setup for the broadcasting um, and I don't have a lot of that. I run a real basic uh, rig at home just to save space. So a little bit of both, but yeah, it was a that was a wild time. I, I actually have a young driver that I, I mentor and, and sort of manage, and he was out of racing and didn't have any income. And mm -hmm. I said to him, his name is Michael Lewis. He races for Brian Herta Autosport in, oh. in IMSA. And I said, Michael, this is your time, man. You know how to set these rigs up. You know how to dial in the software. And literally he was building sim rigs and delivering them to a lot of our our pro racing clients who didn't have them so right until all the stock was gone <laughs> a couple months ago i went down there for a tour of their facility and we got to play with some of the rigs that they have in the yeah. lobby there that was very cool and all but then they took us in the back where they were doing R and D on that giant trophy truck thing that was like a million bucks the one that's on a cruise ship now yep. and i got to drive that sucker and that was a that blew my mind because i was really driving I was really driving that truck. It was all virtual graphics, but I was really in the truck. It was really moving around. It was really clunking and throwing me and tossing me. And it kind of effed with my brain a bit. Oh, yeah. A little, little bit of motion sickness? No. It, no, it was the opposite. It was so good and so real. I didn't want to get out of it, but it was like I couldn't, you know, I would take the thing off and it would be a little bit of like a jarring sensation of, oh, my friends are laughing at me because I'm a stupid guy up here laughing my ass off with my pedal down on the floor. Um, I, I was looking to see if we had the clip of me bouncing around in that stupid thing I, it's up somewhere else. But yeah, uh, VR goggles change it a lot. A lot of that is It was my first time intense. with the goggles. Yeah. Do you do the goggles? I don't love them. Um, I think it's more just a resolution thing. I want like the most the best resolution, but mm -hmm. I haven't used them in a little while. I assume there's some product out there now that's every bit as good as, as a big screen. But I, That was my same complaint. I tried it years ago when it, virtual reality wasn't quite there yet, and, uh, and they put them on me, and I was, it, it was enough that I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm in this, I'm in this world. Yeah, and it was very, very strange. When you look around, up, down, back, yeah, sideways, Yeah, you're looking at you your legs, everything. but they're not your legs. You move your leg and it doesn't move, but you move the wheel in your hands and it does move. It's very, very it's strange. So very trippy. Sorry, man. <laughs> We're a bunch of nerds. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, uh, all that, all that was. Um, so, but that's the same place you're talking about, right? CXC, yeah. yeah. Chris and those guys. Um, 
uh, Chris Constantine and, and his dad, Tim, I, kn I knew for a long time as a, a, a journalist, an automotive journalist, and uh, we recently lost him, but he was writing oh. um, a big group of books that was called Yanks at Le Mans. And Chris is one of the, the, the guys, or was one of the guys that was really part of that LA car culture of automotive journalists, writers, <laughs> um, people that, that really were part of the, the 60s, the 70s, the real heyday of, of SoCal uh, racing, whether it was Formula One and Can Am, Formula Five Thousand, IndyCar, you name it, and uh, all the way all the way over to IndyCar, um, off road motocross, you name it. I mean, where we live in in this this center of of racing is is pretty wild. And the people that have the encyclopedic knowledge are my favorite. There's a guy we know named Chuck <coughs> Miller, an old art group guy, and just oh yeah, so amazing. Yeah. Just to, if you if you ever get a chance to go to lunch, sidle up next to a guy like that because the stories you'll hear are just ridiculous. Yep. Uh, Mike, you got some more questions up there. Oh, it's so many. There's a lot of love for Patrick in this uh, chat tonight here. Um, Top of Stargo, what are your thoughts on Porsche in F1? Oh, the engines with... Uh... Yeah, what, 2026 is yeah. the... Name. I mean, Formula One right now is so great to watch. Um, you know, there's there's so much changeover in the drivers. And now to see Porsche entering... Um, in and and where things will be in 2026 I immediately go to drivers and I think about what will Max Verstappen be like you know <laughs> three years from now or what what will George Russell or uh, Nando or Lando Norris be uh, like in a few years and I just think we we're at a, a the cusp of a bunch of legends coming uh, to the front um, Charles Leclerc I mean these guys are unbelievable what they're doing at their limited amount of experience but then if you look at someone like Fernando Alonso or even Lewis who's starting to be like a um a legend <laughs> yeah um I mean Elder Fernando, mentor at this point yeah but Fernando to be doing it at 41 um it's it's a super super cool time and I think the cars look great I think the racing has been super super close and um yeah I'm a big fan so I'm excited about um Porsche's entry it's a Red Bull is that right yeah, I guess. Red I mean, racing, supposedly. I, I admittedly, I'm not even following <laughs> motorsport that closely on on the media side, so I don't want to comment on something that I. Yeah, but yes, those you. are the rumors. The yeah. rumor is 2026 Red Bull and Porsche. Yeah. I can only comment on rumors. Yeah, who knows? Oh man, that's good stuff. Uh, what can we look forward to at this uh, this Lufka cult coming up? Because I I I, I, I want to do a couple more questions, but I I, I want to tease people. Uh, you tell us what, what, what's happening this year at Lufka Cult specifically. Well, it's um, first of all Sunday, October 9th, uh, the Port of LA, which uh, is close to San Pedro, um, in San Pedro, California. Um, to get to it, I want to highlight some cars that, if you think you've seen it all, um, you haven't seen these cars. Whether that's um, you know enthusiast owned cars that are driving in that morning, or it's cars that are coming from across the country uh, from collections and things that I remember going to Todd Blue's collection up in um, in Paradise Cove last year and he's like you can have anything you want and Todd has one of the most amazing private collections look it up on on Peterson's YouTube channel he has one of the most amazing collections in Southern California and, and most amazing garages and you know I, I chose um, something that wasn't blue it wasn't something that was his favorite and I think that my point is is that unique um, unexpected. Um, I like storylines. Uh, we, we talk often about what's the theme, what's the thread. Um, I think that there's so many people out there that put so much time and thought into their cars. And I want to bring those people forward versus the legacy cars that are the, the cars that you see and that stand out and that are the legends of, of, the culture um I, so we, we know those cars ones into <laughs> well i don't know if it's necessarily that zoom in on next year <laughs> i don't know if it's necessarily that but i have a few um sort of friends and and the committee the unspoken or or unannounced committee oh, that i love it they're like He's we want new shit bring us bring us stuff that we've been in this air-cooled scene for 35 years Bring us twenty five cars we've never seen before so that's a that's a hell of a thing to do though that's a hard ask yeah it's fun we're, oh, we're very fortunate because, honestly, I, I keep a, a running log on a note that I share with a few of the team, including Jeff and Mark Hotchkiss. And I think right now there's like 85 cars that are like trailered in big cars that just found our, their way to the list for Lyft 8 that 
we didn't solicit. We don't call people wow. and ask them, hey, can you bring a car from your collection? These are these are the top 10 collectors in the country calling and stuff. saying, what do you want? Or can I bring this? Or have you ever heard about this car? So we're, we're always excited for those. What does that feel like for you? I mean, you, 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 you're you used to being a public figure. You're used to people cheering for you and championing for you. What does this feel like for a completely different realm of your life? This is a creative thing. This is, a, this is an expression of you and your personality versus a professional thing. Yeah, I think, I think of Luft as its own animal. Um, I, I, I've kind of been there um, just to kind of guide some of the direction or um, the vision. Um, I've always said that the brand should decide for itself. And I know that sounds a little bit airy, but um, <laughs> we listen uh, and we try to go in our own direction and, and sort of pave our own way. But at the same time, um, it's about experience, right? Like the, the biggest win at the end of the day is when people are just blowing up. I remember um, Sean Kiffenholger, I'm going to butcher his last name, <laughs> great, great uh, automotive photographer and artist and a, a guy of not many words, a pretty understated uh, dude. And he came up to me and he just said, like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so excited. I don't like this feeling. I'm kind of mad at you. <laughs> but this is freaking awesome, you know? And those are the experiences you want to create. You want to create that theme park, like, high. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's there for a few hours and then it's gone. You know, cotton we don't... candy. You got to maybe cotton candy this yeah. year. Yeah. We can do that. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> Just a car with full of cotton candy. Joshy. I'll get on to Joshy Robots because he oh, fills his car off. with many things as you might have seen in the yeah, past so maybe we'll just put cotton candy inside of Josh's car <laughs> all right all right mike what else you got i didn't expect that uh yeah, sorry no, buddy all right well i mean i got plenty over here no no no, no. i got i got i want to get to the folks um, on the uh, the gram there yeah no no this is good all right well in uh, the meantime patrick would you consider would you consider a fastest lap event at future luft events Ooh. oof yeah, fastest lap at future lift events. Maybe virtual. Yeah, exactly. Maybe um, like a you know one of those setups. <laughs> we, I will, I will say that I aspire to, um, maybe not competition, but um, some some driving aspects to lift. We we did a rally uh, with our partners at Mobile One last year out of Indy. Um, over to the speedway and I wouldn't call that competitive but that was one of the first times that we sort of organized um, something post lift kind of the morning after um, the, the hungover uh, breakfast after the wedding uh, <laughs> where everybody <laughs> drove up to uh, the speedway so there's a few things um, on my mind as far as um, closed course driving but I don't know if it would ever be um, a competition but I will spin that question into something that I'm excited about which is next Sunday I'm going to compete with a bunch of other crazies on a hill climb at Monterey so Ooh. the Sunday of Monterey we're going to start at pit lane entry turn 11 final corner at Monterey and we're going to race counter course up through turn um, 10 turn 9 um, and oh. into the corkscrew so the finish Going line the of the top of the corkscrew will oh. be the end of the the run and uh there's some cool cars a lot of wild stuff um oh so very, it's just a sprint to the top of the corkscrew yeah screw. point to point oh, okay mini a mini hill climb um, in what kind of cars everything from the <laughs> the what is it doc hudson from the cars you yeah. know that's what that's what uh bruce canapa is going to be driving which is actually a, a nascar underneath it um, I think we're going to have a formula drift racer. Um, we're going to, I'm going to do it in a, in an air cooled 911, of course. Fair um, cool. there'll be vintage and modern. Um, I think Johannes is on the, the docket in, um, the Tesla plaid. So there's, <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff. Wow. Yeah. It's run what you brung. You got to have a roll bar, um, a racing license and a, and a fire extinguisher. Um, and it sold out fast. So it sounds like cars too, where they have everything. To, it's NASCARs and and F Formula yeah. One and everything all in one. Yeah, it's obviously it's single car, so um, it's a spectacle. 
Like the they ra- do it like Goodwood, I'm assuming, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah the, ra- the racing calendar has been adjusted back. I'm on the committee at Monterey for um, the reunion, and it's all about what's the next 25 years of the Rolex reunion going to look like up at Car Week. And one of the things we talked about is let's move the finale day back to Saturday because that's really the place to be at Monterey Car Week, I believe, mm-hmm. on a Saturday is at the track, and that's when the crowds surge. Sunday, they're at Pebble. So let's make Saturday the premiere day oh, and then work sense. back from there. So we'll start a day earlier this this year um, on Wednesday, and and the other guest asked what uh, I'll be driving, and that's fluid at the moment. But um, <laughs> the plan is to drive uh, Tim Pappas's 934 and a half, which is the oh, Interscope car. I'm excited he about working that one. on it today. Yeah, I'm excited about that car. It'll be my first time racing it. I drove it for a, a Porsche special a few years back at Big Willow. Um, the 68 TR um, that I normally drive at Monterey, my kind of regular go-to car. Um, it's a different class structure this year. They're celebrating Le Mans, the centennial of Le Mans. And this is actually the kickoff event for 2023, which will be mm-hmm. the 100th year for Le Mans. Um, with that, uh, I'll be sort of mid-pack with a bunch of Le Mans heritage prototypes of that era, um, late 60s to early 70s. So um, some fun stuff. I'm going to jump into a, a 19, I believe it's a 68 Holman Moody Trans Am car oh from another brand. God. So <laughs> front, front engine. Whiz. So uh, yeah, I, I drove that car be last year place. and uh, absolutely loved it. I, I, I admit it. Um, I love V8s. Uh, front engine cars, they don't handle most of them don't handle as amazing as a, as a 911, That's but they're a lot of fun to race. Wow. So man, oh week. man. Yeah. I can't, I can't, yeah, I mean like your your retired racing life, I guess all right, you had a year of not traveling, but it sounds like you're ramping it up again. <laughs> I'm busier you're than I've busy. ever been, but um I don't I just don't I'm not at the racetrack that much. I haven't raced since Long Beach in April, so um yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. We've was got a question cool? that follows up what he just said as well. Was that cool to, to, to finish up in Long Beach? Like to finish up your, your uh that wasn't your last race, was it though, was it? No, I mean I, I don't I don't consider myself retired or, or any last race. Oh. Um, I just basically, at the end of 21, I said I'm going to call it time on the full-time tour, the full career of up to 200 days a year on the road and spending 15, 20 weekends um, at the racetrack. I have a 7-year-old and a 4-year-old <laughs> at home, and I wanted to – start to focus on all these things I've been talking about for five, 10 years. Like, Oh, when, when I'm not traveling, I'll get to that. And when I and grow one up of, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And one of them was Luft. Um, it always was a side hustle and now it's my first focus oh. along with my work, uh, at PM and a and PCNA. Um, and then family, you know, got to always keep family at the forefront. And I just felt like these years, these 10 years of, of right now, um, my kids, that's really where I want to be around. And so it's been, it's been a lot of fun, but, um, vintage racing is a great outlet. I love that intersection of competition, but also vintage cars. So. Am I wrong in assuming that Long Beach would be your home track? Is that I'm just doing that based on proximity? Yeah, that always felt like my home, my home race, um, especially in my pro career. Um, that was where the most family and friends showed up, and <laughs> right. sort of were, were fueled by that higher. That's power. the one where you could sleep at home if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, and and your ego was just pinging. Like you went down into turn one on the start, and it was like I'm going to come out of this thing leading, even if I'm starting twelfth. You just you had so many people. <laughs> there goes the laugh factor. Yeah, exactly. There, there's so many people in the fans that there's so many people in the stands that were were so pumped and, yeah. and so, such fun to you know have your your, your crew around because n- most of the time we're on the east coast does that propel you forward like a like a like a, a, a i think of a different type of athlete like a baseball player or a football player hearing the crowd um yeah I not don't that you can actually them. hear them but i don't hear them but i feel that energy and i and i really only felt that at long beach to your question you pretty much nailed it i mean laguna felt like a home track to me over the years but that's you know, a long way from here. The crowd is so close in some places in Long Beach. That's yeah. one thing that's will forever be one of the coolest things to me because it's a road course. You know what I mean? So they're just all right on top of right. the track. You're kind of up looking down in most places. And for, for that to me is all part of the magic. The fact that it's all sort of stuffed in there. Yeah, it's a unique track uh, and a unique setting. I mean, the people that Jim McCallion and and the, the promoters get out on a Saturday at Long Beach, I feel like it's 60% non-automotive or, or non-motorsport fans. Really? They're there for a party. You know? Oh, that's They're there true. for a concert. They're there for um, their huge modelos. And it's, it's a huge like, corporate buyout thing. Yeah. It's, it's, just a, it's just an atmosphere. It's an electric atmosphere that you're not used to at um, even at Laguna. Wow. Did you ever meet Paul Newman? Yes. 
Is there a story to it, or was it just, hi, how's it going, Paul? Oh, I think Paul, I think I, Paul. I grew up with Paul. I grew up in the same town like, oh, nice. where Paul Newman, so we cool. used to see him places, oh, selling yeah. his salad oil at the Stu Leonard's and stuff like that, yeah. like no joke. Yeah, I have a, uh, my, my memory of meeting Paul is, is very um, positive, and it, it feels like yesterday. I think it was probably um, 1996 in mid-Ohio. Um, it was an IndyCar race, and it was the heyday of kart, and he was, of course, co-owner. Um, at that point, I don't know if Mario, Mario was probably done, but it was still the heyday of Newman Haas. And I was on a golf cart, and he jumped on the golf cart, and I just was hanging out as a 15-year-old kid. Wow. And the driver of the golf cart, who was kind of the caretaker at Newman Haas, was like, Paul, uh, this is Patrick, and, and Patrick's a go-kart racer. And he looked at me, and he said, go-karts? He said, shifter carts? I said, do some shifter carts. He goes, those things are fast. He goes, I like go-karts. You know, and that was it. Yeah. He was engaged. He was sincere. Um, he was not a man of many words. I mean, he's on the way to the helicopter or whatever, but <laughs> he, he took the time. And, and I, a story about that that I'll extend to that question is um, traveling with Patrick Dempsey for three years and Patrick's celebrity, especially in Europe, he always took the time with people when they came up to him. And they had questions and they interrupted dinner or they interrupted his family time or, or a, a debrief at the racetrack. And I said, gosh, like, how do you remain so humble and so engaged and, and just a consummate pro? And he said, well, one time I met my hero and it was a big letdown. The guy was a total ass. And it just made me feel like so um, betrayed that I had been such a fan of his for so long. And when I think back to meeting Paul Newman, that, that was very much that experience for me as a kid. And I have many of those stories, as we all do, about you know, meeting heroes and, and being surprised by the positivity of that interaction or being really disappointed by it. And, you know, I can say everybody has a bad day. Sometimes you gotta, you got to go and you don't have time. Um, and so there are always those exceptions to the rule. But when I saw Paul Newman, I always saw a guy that was just so gracious. Yeah, That's really, really cool. He used to, I used, uh, when I was a kid, my dad died when I was young. <laughs> it won't be a sad story. But I, I got a job for a short time at Bob Sharp Nissan. Oh, nice. And Bob Sharp still owned it then. Yeah. He hadn't sold it. So he still had the race team. Scott was racing at the time. Nice. And Paul Newman would come in to talk about car. It was when the car and cart uh, separation was happening. In fact, it was probably about the same yeah, time. Exactly. My dad died in 96. So yep. It was probably like 96, 97. <clears throat> and they were talking about all that. And uh, But the real reason that Paul was there was because he was getting into the car business. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he was buying a Volvo, whatever, you know, a Volvo dealership uh, uh, up the up the way, and the, and that's where those Volvo V8 wagons came out of with, the, with Letterman and everything from? else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Is he there to get parts? Probably. I mean, it was a Nissan dealership, but it was they were just there to talk shop. And like, boy, isn't this a hell of a racket? We can we can do all we can sell these people these these street cars, and then we can go pay for our other thing on the weekend. Um, you mentioned Patrick Dempsey and uh, and the story that he told you. That's either a true story or he got his thing down because uh, I worked with him years ago. He was on a TV show that I worked on, and I heard uh, that same story. Somebody else was saying the same thing. But you're so nice and blah blah blah. He goes, well, you know, there's a reason behind that. Yeah. You know, the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I, it's I believe it's totally genuine. I don't think that. I just think that early on when probably when he found his celebrity and his fame that probably led him past those moments of ego or being overextended or but still because he was a kid actor too but you you were a kid racer yeah so it's i mean there's got to be some similarities there actually Uh, i mean racing was such a smaller niche scale um but you know i think the that same kind of hierarchy and it, whether it's high school or racing or, or being a Hollywood celebrity, I think there is that. It's all high school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's all high school. That's the, the bottom line. There's, there is all, all of that lesson in that. Um, all right. I, we we got to plug this new thing you're doing. Haggerty, Rod Emery, we're fans of both. What's going on? Oh, garage and social, but Van Nuys, um, you know, the Valley, California, mm-hmm. where we're at right now. I'm so just excited. Up, just up the street here. Bob. Exactly. <laughs> just up right over there. Exactly. I, I, um, we haven't formally um, announced anything. Uh, I was actually talking to Rod tonight, and I was like, hey, like, let's throw another little breadcrumb out on social. Last week, he posted on his Insta. Of the garage. Uh, of the The, of, ins- of the, the interior space. Yes. And, and so we are, I think Rod and I have both always talked about and aspired to um, a setting in, in our backyard um, and, and something that 
tells a story um, and gives a permanent place for people to meet up. So we're going to have, um, I'm probably going ahead of myself here on the PR plan, but we're going to have <laughs> yeah, seven, keep talking. 7,500 <laughs> square feet of clubhouse space. We're going to have 30,000 square feet of storage. Um, we have hundreds of hundreds of cars um, there uh, the, in the center on the bottom oh, there. Actually, maybe even maybe even one up or a couple up. But yeah, that's the interior of the space. Um, the bottom line is, is that we we have a yard that's contained that will give people uh, a regular place to go. Not that we need another weekly car show, but um, to do some cool themed parties um, to we have an automotive space to display, um, whether that's a collection or a car reveal. Um, just a lot of happening things on one piece of property. It's two different um, pieces of, of land and, and dwellings. And yeah, we're excited. And I think that this will be um, just the start of it. Uh, but Rod is a machine, as you probably yeah. know. Yeah. That guy goes so hard. I mean, he's up at three in the take morning. He a nap, let alone you sleep. Know, I think one of the, the, the pictures he posted, he's, he's like holding a leaf blower. That's and, what he was doing. Yeah, he's and he's the space. blowing the parking lot. And I'm like, don't you, Rod, don't you have like and 300 you, cars if you read that the you're caption, currently he's building? He's like, oh, three acres done, two more to go. Yeah. So <laughs> he is <laughs> so hands-on. He's so genuine <laughs> in his work ethic. And he just wants to drive forward. I mean, he is a doer. And yeah. I love that about him. I met him. Another guy I met uh, racing f over 15 years ago. He was a co-owner of a car that I drove. And he just always struck me as another genuine human um, and somebody that had ambition and didn't allow uh, politics or ego or anything to get in the way of just making cool shit. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you, you, you have your friends for a reason. You, you really have amassed quite the team. You know, every, you have all these like kind of specialists all around, and and they all do too with your involvement. It's kind of a nice thing to watch. We yeah. we all enjoy the things you make. Well, we're 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 different in how we operate, and I'm not um, necessary. I mean, in some ways, I'm a I'm a hands-on kind of guy, but in other ways, I like strategy. I like uh, conceptual. I like planning. I love building teams. I love mm -hmm. pulling people together that I think are strong in their own ways, but are also strong in working with one another. And so I think that when I walk away and ask myself, like, what did I do the last 10 years with every <laughs> minute of my time, um, when it comes to um, building teams, I think it's about creating environments where you make cool stuff, but you really enjoy doing it with those people that are around you. So it, it has to be both. I definitely agree with that. When you're miserable, everybody's miserable. Yeah. The, the, the Regardless product, of the product the suffers. Yeah. yeah. It's a weird thing. The sum of all things. Uh, Mike, anything else? Because I want to be, I'm a little conscientious of your time here. You've already, you've done more than an hour. <laughs> oh, it's flown if I have. Really? You good with it? All right. Are you okay for oh. two more? Sure. Go ahead. All right. There's uh, a couple of them here. If you hadn't gone the factory driver route, what other discipline would you have liked to uh, race in? And then they've got a Cayman versus 911 question as well. Uh, <laughs> if that's the, the question, and street, we're not taking it. Do you prefer it. <laughs> the driving experience of the Cayman or the 911? Yeah, I think we, <laughs> anyway. No, I would like to hear your opinion on that. I have my own. Um, another discipline, I guess the question is around another discipline other than sports car racing. I love... Um, as we talked about, I love sliding on the dirt. I recently was up at Ventura at Corey Cruzman's uh, sprint car experience oh. and um, lots of horsepower, not a lot of grip. I want to um, do that. Went and did Baja, loved that. Anything where there's way more power than there is grip or brakes. Did you ever need to do any midget or any of that stuff? Um, just off, uh, outlaw? Just training, yeah, with Corey uh, up in Ventura. Corey is a legend of the short track, uh, non wing sprint cars and midgets. Um, World of Outlaws is cool, but if you take the wings off it, they go very it's sideways. Yeah, and I grew up at Ascot uh, watching the non-wing <laughs> sprint cars. Over the wall. Exactly. Um, I love rally racing. Um, rally is is something I got to do a little bit of the former um, closed course GRC. Um, and really? Got to test some of those cars. Um, V8 supercars. Um, lots of horsepower, not a lot of tire. Um, <laughs> love doing that. So, yeah, I, I love driving anything with lots of power and not a lot of grip. And speaking of that, the GT3 versus the GT4 or Cayman versus uh, 911. I'm a 911 guy through and through. And I love the mid-engine car. I love the, the product and uh, had a lot of fun recently uh, doing the press launch for the GT4 RS. Um, threw that car around streets of Willow, the newly paved streets of Willow, which is 
amazing. Really? I mean, not right now. I don't think anybody belongs in Willow Springs in the middle of summer. But <laughs> oh, no. once it cools down a yeah. little bit, yeah, go I'm check sorry out you Streets had to come here today. My God, of all days to have to come up to the valley. My God. No, it's not too bad. I mean, I'm I'm in, up in, in Westlake Village, so it's the oh, same. I don't same know why kind of, I thought you were South Bay. No, oh, I used Chris, to be. So you're used to the I was shit, in Manhattan then. Beach, but I recently relocated back to like where I grew up, the stomping grounds, and uh, it's hot up there. Well, that's going to be fantastic with this Van Nuys operation opening up. Yeah. Or were you by the airport? Can you say where it is? Yeah, we're half a mile from Van Nuys Airport, Beautiful. which is, if you if you fly private, like yourself, then <laughs> that's Hilarious. kind of the place to be, um, it, it, at least on this side of the hill. Yeah. Um, so a lot of um, out-of-town um, people who want to keep a car in L.A., I think that's one of our, our ideas with um, Garage and Social and, and the storage side of things. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Agora Hills, so I feel like the valley. I'm kind. Of, I was kind of on the fringes of the valley, um, but that was kind of where we went um, to find some culture, some good restaurants, yeah. to find the bar scene. It was the valley. So. I'm just thinking all of our car shits over there, from TLG to Ed Pink. Like it's all sort of in the same. Yeah. Push over there. Yeah, and I was thinking about Angeles Crest. I was thinking about Santa Monica Mountains and those kind of driving hubs. And talking to Rod, I was like, man, this is. This is the kind of middle point. It's very central to both of those scenes. And I mean, I'll, I'll tell again more than I probably should about like Rod and I, we were literally window shopping for buildings with the Haggerty team and driving all around Southern California and talking about different pockets, even different streets and kind of what we wanted in a building. And this was the building that was far and wide the number one prospect and there were of course multiple bids um on this building and it went a different direction so we kind of lost hope and we mm. were out looking for um the next prospect plan b and then it came back to us so um yeah this this is an exciting one i honestly don't think as a as a site for um sort of a, a permanent um automotive event experiential zone that this is this is great for us and yeah it's about 20 minutes for me to your point awesome. and for rod it's about five minutes from his shop um and and both of our grandparents um had automotive uh shops within the same area so my grandpa owned the flying a gas station right around oh, the corner from I rod's grandpa yeah who was um valley uh custom valley custom so uh we don't know if they knew each other we think they probably How did could you not have been but it was days. a very tight-knit circle and of course both our grandparents were more kind of the detroit um flatheads and and the custom you know hot rod culture of the 60s 50s and 60s so, so wait did you grow up with marco too because marco was in that little pack with rod i feel like i feel like marco and i grew up together uh we're the same age and we're we're the same kind of um hot tempered passionate people but um <laughs> no i we didn't grow up per se but i mean obviously tony tony um marco's late dad is is uh such a I'm sure you guys have talked about him a lot on the show. He's oh, such wow, a, yeah. an amazing man. And I remember meeting Tony. Somewhere actually. over there. Let's drive these pigs. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great dude. I'm great memories of my first time meeting him as well. Don't cry. No, it's almost it's... over. <laughs> 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 I was talking to Marco like two hours ago. So there's no, uh, there's no tears left in my, he's, in my veins. He's, we're all, everybody's gone through a lot these days. It's all sorts of stuff. It's crazy. Um, how do you feel? Was this okay for your first time? Once I great. got my nerves out of me. As as you can tell, I I like to talk. I mean, the time went by. The time went by pretty fast. So yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, was there anything else up there, Mike? That uh, that we needed to get to? Nah, let's put her to bed. This was great. <laughs> well, 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 uh, well, there will be more of show in a, in a moment. We're not going away. The the beginning of the show has become the after show. Uh, but as for you, how do people follow you? How do people keep up with what you're doing? I guess follow Lufka Colt and PL Motorsport on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are my Instagram, um, babies, if you will. Um, I'm not a great social media person. Um, I'm going to get to that. That's, that's definitely on the to-do list. Um, but I try to put stuff out there. I, I find social to be interesting. I overthink it because the, the, there needs to be a sense of, of modesty. And I think there needs to be a sense of mystery. A you, behind you can't the put curtain. Your, you can't put your whole life on. I, I can't put my whole life on the screen because first of all, what else, there would be no time to do anything else. But I also think that, um, there needs to be some things that aren't out there for everybody. So, um, but also, who wants it all? That's what I come to. Everybody, yeah. Well, more of this, more of that. Like, who the hell wants it all? Yeah, Isn't so this enough? It's kind of like put it out there when it's it's something interesting, and if not, then um, enjoy the ride. Go with your gut. 
I hate to be that was not an intended Magnus <laughs> thing there, but it, it is. It's kind of uh, if you're try, if you're trying too hard, you're trying too hard. Is my yeah, thing. I think so. Um, thank you for doing this, buddy. Thanks for really, having me. Thank you so Good much. Congratulations you. on everything. Thank um, you. Best of luck with Luftgekult. It's going to be amazing. Who's the official podcast of Luftgekult? Is anyone doing any kind of anything? You know, Can we I've, throw our names in the hat. Is there I've still time? I've heard podcasts that have been um, recorded on the grounds during the show that I didn't even know. I remember, I, I think it was, was it Driving Well Awesome maybe did did theirs um, right there, just kind of popped it up. But um, no, oh, I meant talk. like from, an, if, like from you know, like in the Porsche Zentrum or something. Is, is there a, if there's a spot, let us know. Yeah, I will. Actually, throw our names in that hat. Absolutely. <laughs> Audition for you. I'll I dance. Think, <laughs> I, think that, I think that is, um, I mean, here it is. We're just talking about it on air. But I think that that is one of the, the elements I've always talked about is, there's so many people that come through and they have so many unique stories. Missed opportunity. You know, could you, could you like, you'd probably have to keep it to like 10 minutes or, or you'd only get a few people cause we don't stay popped up very long, but yeah, that's exactly it. But I think that's, that's what would be fun about it. Just have a table where it's literally a revolving seat as people are walking around the show. I think that'd be fun. If you let Marco or Kevin Jeanette in, like you wouldn't get anybody shut, else. Shut it down. You wouldn't get anybody shut else down. through. And it can't be near the beer garden. That's right. <laughs> Love, love those boys. Um, thank you so much, Patrick Long. Lufka Cult is uh, October 9th. 9th. I had to My think gosh. about that. I can't believe Inside it. Inside of two months. I know. I can't believe it. We're at the Marconi on September 3rd, and I'm looking at that, and everything else that seems to be distant after. Yeah. But this may be like, nah, two weeks later. You're going back to work. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Thanks for being here. You can either hang out or not. It's up to you. We are going to do an East Coast feed. We're going to talk to uh, producer Mike there, who hosts the Letterman podcast as well. I don't know if you were a Letterman fan ever. Was yes, that... I was. Really? Yes. What about racing still or or, or uh, the no, TV? No, the career? show. I mean, the show for sure. But I still I still watch. I saw an interview with him two weeks ago at Indy um, after they finished second or third at, at the road team. course. And it was awesome. Yeah. He went into your, he went into driver mode. He went into team owner mode. Well, it was a great day for the team. <laughs> yeah. You know, he really, he turned it on. It was awesome. Yeah, no, he's, he's a cool, cool dude. And he's always supported young drivers. I remember Tim Moser was a SoCal driver that he was um, helping out in kind of out of the karting scene. So, and the, cool you guy. know that we're nuts that this is his old desk and those are his old chairs and stuff. I right? remember you told me that. That's <laughs> crazy. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, that sure is. <laughs> <laughs> that legitimizes the whole set. <laughs> it it required the whole set. This used to be just a little dining room table. Do you remember that? It was fun and easy. That's pretty cool. Uh, COVID. I blame COVID. Um, all right. So let's see. Producer Mike. Let's see. We got... Um, well, first of all, hang on. God, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that... <laughs> <laughs> Who loves talking about car insurance? This guy had a great talk with <laughs> Sinclair today. Uh, they say all which separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. What types of toys are we talking about today, Mrs. Fry? Collector. Cars. That's right. <laughs> that could be anything. Uh, say it's your Porsche collection today since Patrick's here. Uh, licensed in most states, St. Clair Insurance shops top providers so you get the best coverage for your toys. Check them out by simply going to the internet. Dial it up at www. And then coverageforyourtoys.com. 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 And tell Jeff St. Clair that we say hello, especially Nicole, because sometimes. I cannot. <laughs> I asked him today. I go, is that, you know, okay that we do that? He goes, oh, I think it's adorable. He, he loves it. He said he, he had a little twinkle in your eye and he could tell. Um, and then also, real quick here, Series 1 Films. Series 1 Films is more than just films. They can set you up with effective marketing solutions like press releases on major news sites and scale your rank on Google and produce <laughs> a lot of ands, and produce <laughs> cinematic content for your automotive brand or business. Series1films.com is available by going to series1films.com. Here's what they look like if you want to see what their work is. So, it's our friend Taylor. We actually love his work. Check it out. Yeah, good stuff. And our buddy Magnus there. I think that might be a sneak peek from his new uh, OPP show. Other oh. people's Porsches. Is he driving any of your Porsches? Can we say? Has he reached out yet? Who? Magnus. He's got a new show called Other People's Porsches. Oh no, He's driving I didn't, other people's didn't Porsches. hear about that. 
<laughs> I'm feeling you'll get a call at some Maybe. point. Yep. <laughs> I've driven some of his cars. He's got some great stuff. He does. What'd you drive of his? Uh, a couple of turbos um, and his um, 73. Is that his 277? Yeah. 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 Fun. I'm looking forward to that myself one of these days. We're going to do something where we both drive each other's cars up there and do a little video. I think that'll be nice. fun. Looking forward to it. <laughs> telling you everything we're you told us your plans i'm telling you mine uh <laughs> by the way 32 years racing 32 years professionally racing and and 18 of those with porsche yeah i mean that's something man does do you feel like that's an accomplishment because you wear it like it's just a i feel old no um <laughs> you don't look i think i think driving um and racing was just kind of my thing and from eight years old it's what i feel like i everything else was just sort of um, I had to do it, but oh, racing sorry. was what, what I focused on. So oh, excited to do some other stuff. Uh, have these guys reached out to you yet? Avance? No. They got a new magazine out. Uh, the other day we oh, said yeah, something. Actually. They gave us a, a shirt and a membership and all that stuff, and they sent us a whole thing in the mail. And I said, oh, I like the other shirt that they, that they were wearing at the event. <laughs> and he sent me one of those. That's Yeah, awful. he brought it up to the GVBC. And these so guys thanks. Northwest? Yeah, they're all over the place, and they just opened up an L.A. Uh, thing. Okay. And then look at this. These were gifts for us. This, this is not merch. These were gifts. But Whoa. from Paul Novotny. Isn't that funny? It's the Newcomb sign on our shirt. That's it's, so cool. It's, it's very sweet. I don't know which one's yours. But he said he got them for us in multiple sizes, so everybody will oh, be happy. Paul. Uh, and then, real quick. That's right. We're doing Thanks. viewer mail. This showed up today. And I don't know if there's a note in here or not, but apparently we have some friends at... Do you say Griot's Garage or Griot's Garage? Griot's. 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 I know that one yeah. for a fact. You do? All right. Joey says he knows this one for a fact. And they said, and maybe, I don't know if there's, I don't know if this is love from Griot's or if it's insulting because they're saying our car is filthy. Could be both. Anyway, it seems to be a lot of nice stuff here from Griot's, but to my knowledge, we don't have any friends at Griot's. Michael so Dolphin. maybe maybe we do now. Do you know who, anybody who works in there? Michael Dolphin helps with them. You're kidding. No, oh, this not. has got to be uh, from him then. So he's hooked me up with I the whole kit from that. them as well. Michael so. Dolphin? Like, oh, Michael hang on. Dolphin Maybe there's a thing at the bottom. Anything detailing or cleaning, like, incredible. Oh, jeez. Well, we're going to clean the floor next. Let's see. Um, thanks, Diglett. Wow, look at him. He's on the fire. Uh, nope. Nope. Adam Kramer? Uh, oh, Avant sponsorship. Adam Kramer. Oh, there you go. Maybe, maybe you, stole their, you stole their package. Oh, I bet. You know what? I bet you're right. It's <laughs> somebody else's T-shirt and car cleaning products. Uh, well, thanks for the uh, for thanks for the care package from Griots and Avance. That's good stuff. Uh, and then the last thing, it's the monkey's birthday, and we didn't do it on Tuesday oh. uh, over on East Coast feed, so we got to do that real quick. Checking in yes. with Danbury Chive. Sure. Uh, he's usually at Richfield BMW over there in Fairfield County, but today we are at home doing something fun. For her kid's birthday. Roll it out. Dad. What's today? My birthday. How old are you? Six. Six years old. Uncle Jay and Nicole, look at this. <laughs> right, monkey? You got the splash pad, you got the yeah. pool back there, right? It's yeah. Grandma and Pop Pop's house. Yeah. Fun times. Wait, Fun times, kids. We're at the uh, East Coast Beat Company Live for Mom and Dad. Yes, baby girl. Yeah. Take the clip out, kid. Do whatever you want. Take it out. I'll take it, baby. It's, I know. You, it's a, you get wet all you want. It's your birthday. Fuck it. Let's go. The whole family's here. Take a quick tour. You'll, some of the usual suspects see Taylor. There's my mother and uh, Noel, Michael. There's Brooke. Oh so, hi, everybody. Nothing? Oh, okay. Two trucks. We're going to bring up here. We're going to get everybody in. Look, look, here comes, here comes mom and Noel. It's East Coast Beat for Jay. Say hi to Uncle Jay. There's Taylor. Okay. What's up, everybody? There. Let me get, let me get Brooke. Look at Super Mom. There she is in her splendor. Uncle Mike. Go! And James and Christina. And look, we got Megan. Oh my Annie. Gosh, and there's Alan and Kathy. And the new baby, Peyton. I'm trying. Take a quick run inside because you know it's what we got to do. Because you cannot see Grandma, who's 96 now, telling the same story over and over again. We got the cupcakes that the kid wanted. She made them herself. Look at that, huh? Very important. Hang on. Going in the house. Hey, Graham. Hey, Let me interrupt your story. Oh, say hi to Jay. He wants to say hi. Just say hello. Who's that? Jay. Jay from California. Jay. Oh, wow. You say hi. That's what you do. There we go. Perfect. There we go. And look, there's Deb and Jeff. Say hi, guys. Hi. 
<laughs> and there we go. This is the uh, birthday celebration. We got unicorn balloons. And we got last week this. Look at this here. Yeah. Yeah. Sausage and peppers. Oh, it's catered. And, uh, vodka. <laughs> oh, wait. And the, you can't forget the main thing that I went down and got. Genoa? There we go. Where is he? Oh, White Your Castle. White Castles. Got the White Castles. Love you guys. Have a great day. Okay, I didn't watch that ahead of time. That was hilarious. I'm sorry it was so long. That was hilarious. You met everyone in the family there. That's nice. And then I forgot there were some YouTube comments before you leave, uh, Patrick. They're probably for you. Bungletronic says, I have the same Faith No More shirt. Are any of us wearing a Faith No More shirt? No? All right. No. Next. I'm wearing a Faith No More shirt. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Uh, hi, Patrick. So excited for lift aid. Since I've had my 9-11 other lifts, does he automatically exclude me from this? Uh, great event. We're going to have a pre-lift party. Okay, I'm not going to make you answer that. Uh, so ready for Lyft because we were all coming out of hibernation and we've been working on our cars. This was a fun venue last time. Looking forward to it again. Uh, 6 a.m. parking lots because the stress, the stores want us gone by the time they, oh, oh this is a conversation about Malibu. <laughs> keep it, keep it. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a fueled conversation. Uh, the Malibu uh, Country Mart situation? Yeah. It's crazy. Although it seems to have been uh, resolved by... Um, the uh, organization that owns the Mart setting up valet parking, mandatory valet parking. And that seems to have shut it down like three weeks ago. That will <laughs> so do it. We're not going anymore. And I honestly thought that was a genius solution. <laughs> it really so is. So you're not a fan of the prior? No, I, we, I feel like we helped start that damn, damn thing. We used to be there from 8 to 10 every Sunday from since like 2012, something like that. We looked back at the pictures, and we used to be there from like 8 till 10, and then kind of like Spike and Jerry would show up, and then kind of the people would come because they were there, and we would leave. And and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger over COVID, and we were there for all of that. And then it just got so big and such a clusterfuck. And then when they didn't want him there, then people were like, well, you can't make us leave. And then that whole thing started. And when it's this and the dicks out and measuring contests and whatever, I'm like, you're probably, your competitive streak probably goes up. Fuck you. I'm an idea. I'm just like, I'm out. I'll go make my own yeah, fucking lemonade want, somewhere else. You want a peaceful weekend? Yeah. We went, we used to go there for muffins and fresh air and peace and quiet. And once we weren't getting that, we didn't mind not going anymore. But I thought it was just a genius solution. I was like, all this crazy aggression when somebody was like, you know what? We've changed the policy. <laughs> so so it's, it's valet, but once you're there more than 10 minutes, I mean, I guess nobody who wants to show their cars. Can That's have the there. idea is that people aren't valeting their, their Lambos and stuff, which I wouldn't either. They can, I they love can park that my 912. solution. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It sucks that the car show then, but it's not going to go away. It'll just move somewhere else. It'll move. Yeah. I see it as a huge win-win. All I know is, you know, when we used to, the, the morning, those quiet mornings I'm talking about, half the stores in the distance there were surf cowboy is now and everything. They were all empty. Yep. All empty. And now they are full and they're broken. That giant one is broken into three different fronts and they're all full. So, I mean, I don't think this was awful for the Malibu Country Mart, This having all these no, people around not. and everything and all the publicity. The irony. Probably the car, the car show that really pushed. Do you remember Trankus? It yeah. Was, it, was the, it was not dissimilar, but they just didn't get so violent. And when they shut it down, they shut it down. It took like maybe two times for it to go away instead of a year and a half. <laughs> no comment I love it I've said too much I, uh, I, I like reading about the drama uh, Bandito bro oh I see okay Bandito Brothers was fun though uh, I missed 2017 so I'm glad it's back there Universal Backlot was fun too uh, I missed the Lumberyard year they've all been rad Bandito Brothers was super special and you must just get this all the time people just sharing the love that's all the, there's no, no I appreciate questions. it just people Thank loving you. you yeah I appreciate it um, on the track and street do you prefer the driving experience uh, oh we already got that alright great then we're done you're done <laughs> cool <laughs> alright we love everybody I love you we love everyone at home uh, we are back next week Oh, tomorrow we're at GBBC, and the next week we've got comedian Dean Del Rey on Tuesday and uh, Vinny Russo from Smoking Tire and Other Things on Thursday and whatever else. Thanks again to Patrick Long. Thank you. Thank really you. grateful. Thank you, Stiglet, and uh, everybody else. We'll see you out there. Have a great weekend.